For more on the coronavirus, we're joined by Dr. Amish Adalja. He's a senior scholar at Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security. Doctor, based on what we know right now, do you believe the World Health Organization should declare the coronavirus outbreak a global health emergency? I think right now all signs point to this being a public health emergency of international concern, and it probably has been so for the last several days. Right now, I think everybody's acting as if it is one, so the, the declaration will have less of an impact than it would have been if it would have been declared a couple of weeks ago or when they first met. But I do think this will galvanize the world, get political will behind trying to control this outbreak and understand this outbreak, and allow the WHO to make recommendations that are non-binding but will be very important for how we manage this outbreak going forward. And if they do in fact declare it a global health emergency, does that also mean more resources for countries that have confirmed infections, including China? It, it will likely result in increased resources going to countries, more personnel being dedicated to this task. This will get the, he the eyes of many heads of state around the world. It will really show the world that we need to come together and try and understand this outbreak and mitigate its consequences. Dr. Adalja, we've also learned from the CDC that there's, there's been the first person-to-person -person transmission um, in the state of Illinois, which brings our total cases in the United States, total confirmed cases, to six. Uh, how concerned should Americans be now? This doesn't change anything. We expected this spouse to be somebody that would be high risk because he had contact with his wife when she was symptomatic, very close contact. So we know that this virus can spread within families who have close contact. And it's not really representative of, of community-based uh, community transmission. That's the real thing that we're trying to avoid is individuals getting infected by coughs and sneezes, uh, that they come into contact with people that are not in their family. So th this should not panic uh, the American public. I think this was something that shows that the system works, that we knew this, this man was at high risk, and now he was promptly diagnosed as soon as he developed symptoms. And this shouldn't uh, change how people think of the risk of this. And, and we've had this type of transmission already in Canada as well. So this is something that we expect if you've got very close contacts uh, within a family. So if someone comes back from the epicenter of this outbreak, let's say Wuhan, comes to the United States, comes to your home, spends time in your home, you hug them, you entertain them, um, what are the chances of getting it? It depends on if they were symptomatic. If they had symptoms, there is a chance. But if they had no symptoms at all when they were in your home, there should not be a chance that, that you will contract that, uh, that virus. It really has to do with symptoms, coughing, sneezing, coming into contact with, re with respiratory secretions of another individual. And you remember that these patients that are, these passengers that are coming back from Wuhan are under monitoring, they're under surveillance in terms of public health check-ins that they have to do. So they should sort of be uh, limiting their contacts uh, until, they're, until they're clear and they have guidance on how to do that. But no, you shouldn't be worried if someone had no symptoms, even if they came back from Wuhan. Oh, so you're saying the coronavirus cannot spread person to person unless uh, the person is showing symptoms. That's the, that's, been, that's the general consensus that we've had. I know there is one report in China where there may have been this type of transmission, but it's really important that we see the data because we've never seen that before with any other coronavirus. And uh, it would be certainly uh, striking if this one could do that. But it's also important to remember that people are most contagious when their symptoms are most severe, when they are coughing and when they are sneezing the most. So that's really going to be driven by symptoms, even if, uh, when this is a big if, there is some contagiousness during the incubation period. The thrust of infections, what drives the outbreak is going to be people who are symptomatic with mild illnesses that are spreading this, just like with other respiratory viruses that spread in the community. Dr. Amish Adalja, thank you so much.